Today we're gonna learn how to add creative texture and color to your portraits in Photoshop. And guys, if we follow the steps, I gotta say it's super simple to do. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download any of the photos shown in the video, check the links in the description. So the first thing that we need to do is to get things ready. So here we have the photo of our subject. We need to bring in the photo of the texture. So there are two ways of doing this. One of the easiest way is going to that folder, dragging it in inside of Photoshop and drop it over there. As easy as a pie. And then you can go ahead and adjust it the way you like it. Just like that. So that's one way of doing this. If you cannot do it, if you don't like this way, let me show you the other way. The other way is also pretty simple. All you have to do, go to file and then open and then locate that image right over there and hit open. And then it will open up in another document. You need to bring it in inside of this document. All right. So right now it's opening. So all you have to do, press control or command A. This is for select all control or command C for copy and then Come into this document back and all you have to do is just paste it. Okay, come back to this, press Ctrl or Command V. So there you go. That's how it's done. Now, let me show you one more way if you're not satisfied with this. So you can also do this. Instead of going to File Open, you can just drag it in and drop it here. Not over the image, drop it here. It will say Copy at the bottom. Once you drop it in, it will again open up in another document. And let me show you one more way, which is available in Photoshop CC 2018. And that's that way is really cool. You can copy and paste layers. That's interesting, right? Select the layer and then press Ctrl or Command C. This one is for copy. Come back to this document and then paste it. Ctrl or Command V. Boom. So lots of ways of doing that thing. But let me just go ahead and drag it and drop it because it imports it as a smart object. You can change the settings always in preferences, but let's not get into that. All right. So let's get into the folder and drag it and drop it over the image. Now we need to adjust it according to the image. How do you want the texture to look like? So it's taking the time because it's a huge texture. It's I think more than 10 megapixels or 20 megapixels. Anyway, let's make it bigger like that and you can hold the shift and alt or shift and option if you're using a Mac and make it bigger from the center. So that's a tip right over there. Let's make it even more bigger to fit her. Make it big enough so that it fits. If you want the face to be a little seamless, here's what we will do. Watch this. We will flip it vertically, not horizontally. We will flip it vertically. So right click and choose flip vertical. As simple as that. Now it's flipping it vertical. That's cool. And we can place it just like that. And by the way, you can also rotate it as well. Let me show you one more tip. And this is exciting. Once you drop it over the image, let's bring it at the top. Okay. Rotate it just like that. And you can hold the shift to rotate it at 15 degrees straight. Right. So not any random number. You have perfect rotation. Now, Take it to the top just like that and make it bigger from this point. So take this anchor point and drop it over there. And then if you press shift and alt shift our option, if that's a Mac, watch it makes it bigger from that point. Make it a little bigger than the canvas so that we can stretch it later and hit enter. The next step would be cleaning up the texture. Now that's completely upon you. If you want the cracks to be visible, you can leave it at that. Or if you want to clean it, let's clean it. So I wanted to clean it because that wouldn't look good with the cracks. So these are the cracks and this is just a texture. You don't have to be super careful about this. So let's go ahead and rasterize this image. We don't want it to be a smart object anymore. Right click and choose rasterize layer. Now choose any tool that you want, polygonal or lasso tool. I'm going to go ahead and choose lasso tool and make selections of this. And don't be super accurate about this. Don't spend your whole hour doing this. Just make a selection and then go to edit, fill. Inside of fill, make sure contents is content aware, normal 100% and color adaptation is checked. Hit OK and it will do it very easily. And you don't have to do a thing. It just does it automatically. Have a look. And it's a texture. You don't have to be super careful about this. 
So, do we have to again and again go to edit fill? No, we don't. We can use the shortcut. So make a selection of this as easy as a pie, just like that. And then press shift backspace. So shift backspace, it opens up the fill dialog box and then content, content aware, same thing. You don't have to do dial it in again and again. All you have to do, shift backspace and you're pretty much good to go, All right? So you can go ahead and clean this to your liking as much as you like. And from there, move forward. So let me repeat the steps for you again. Make a selection, okay? Then shift backspace, window will appear. The settings are already dialed in, hit OK. And done, once it's done, you have to press Control or Command D to let go of those marching ants. Control or Command D. So that's the whole process right here. Now, one of the great ways of finding out which areas you need to clean, all you have to do, change the blend mode of this one from normal to multiply, which we will do later. But for now, let's do it. Let's have a look at which areas we need to clean. For example, these cracked areas, if you want to keep it, keep it. By all means, please keep it. But if you don't like it, then you can go ahead and remove it as well. But I'm kind of liking that one. See, this is kind of distracting. This is not looking good over here. So all we have to do, select it like that. Whoops, bad selection, select it. Make sure all of it is selected nicely. Shift backspace, hit OK. And that should be fine. That's better, much better. Make a selection of this, shift backspace, OK. All right, that's good. It's pretty good. Anything else we need to do right over there? No, that's looking great. This thing is kind of distracting. So we can make a selection and then shift backspace. Enter. Control or Command D. This one, let's remove it. Shift backspace. OK. Control or Command D. Now that's pretty much done. That's looking great. Now you can always go ahead and move it according to your liking. With the move tool, you can move it to or liking, I'm gonna go ahead and move it this way. Now, one of the things that we will do here is to position the head and the body separately. Why separately? Suppose you were painting on my face. Just suppose, you won't, I know, but suppose you were painting on my face right here, okay? Right around this place. So once you're painting a stroke, you won't directly go to my neck. You will paint here, then here, then here, and then go to the neck. Once you're painting here around my lips, you won't go directly to the neck, will you? So if you have a look at this, have a look at this. It just directly goes to the neck. So we need to position it differently. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? That's what we need to do. So first of all, let's position it differently and then work on them separately. So make a copy of the texture layer, press Control or Command J make name one face and this one the body as easy as that now turn off the face and now we need to make a selection around her chin so here's how we do it zoom in and you can also go ahead and turn off the body it doesn't really matter at this point you can use the pen tool or any tool that you like just make a selection around the neck or the line which separates them okay so Take the pen tool, press P. I'm not gonna go ahead and use the curvature pen tool, it's fancy. I'm gonna use the regular pen tool. I love the regular one, okay? So let's pick a point right over there. And you have to be super accurate in this case. It's very essential. And by the way, if you want to know how to use the pen tool, you can watch the video right here. It's the complete guide to mastering pen tool in 30 minutes, a must watch video. All right, so once you click and drag, you can hold the control or command to adjust it the way you like it. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust it just a little bit. Okay. Make sure to keep, keep it a little inside. Okay, let's make another point right over there. Now this is a long handle. Hold the control or command and make it shorter like that and adjust it from here. This is a little crooked. We can hold the control or command, click on it to bring back the selection in case you accidentally deselected that. Okay. Now this is something that you need to have patience with. See, 
it's creating another line. So if you want to continue with the previous line, just click on the end if you lost it and then continue like that. And that's fine. Now let's go ahead and adjust it. Fine. Adjust it from here. Fine. Adjust it a little bit from there. And that's looking pretty good. Now what you can do, you can make the selection a little soft. And by the way, you can also just, let's take the selection all the way like that. And since the background is black, you don't have to be super careful around the complete face. If the background was white or lighter, you would have to do that. Okay, you would have to make a clear selection of this. And if there is hair, you can watch this video right here on selecting hair. That's an excellent, one of the best ways I know of selecting hair. Now, once you make this, you can right click on it and choose make selection. Hit OK. Now, at this point, you can choose the face, turn it on and then click on the mask button. Now, this will restrict it just to the face. But as you can see, it is very sharp. It's, it's super, super sharp. So we need to make the mask a little softer. So how do we make it softer? Select the mask, then simply choose the blur tool. We are not blurring the image. We are blurring the mask strength. You can decrease it to 40% and then just make this a little blurry like that. That's pretty good. As you can see, there's a little area left to right over there, a little area. So there are a couple of ways of extending it. So what you can do, you can simply take the brush and make it smaller and just paint that area like that. So you can paint in white right here and then hold the shift to paint a straight line. Hold the shift, paint a straight line. And by the way, if you want to know the trick, here's how it works. Click once, hold the shift key, click on the other side, it will make a line. So it doesn't matter right now, it's it's clear. And that's pretty okay. I kind of like it and that's done. Now we need just the opposite mask on the body. So here's what we do. Turn on the body and then copy and paste this mask here. Very simple. So hold the Alt or Option, click and drag the mask and paste it here. But it's the same mask, we need to invert it. So select the mask and then press Ctrl or Command I, I for invert. Simple. Now we have different ones for the face and the body. Why did we do so? Because we wanted to move the body a little inside because once you paint it, see the neck doesn't come in directly. It's a little inside. So this area is a little inside and chin is protruding outside. So here's what we do. If we try to move the body, it also moves with the mask. We don't want the mask to move. So click on this link right over there. This breaks the link between the mask and the layer and then select the layer and move it. This won't let it move. See, now it's looking much more realistic. Move it with the arrow keys slowly and gradually just like that. And that is fine. That's looking much more realistic. Otherwise it was the blue was continuing right over there. After this point, whatever we will do, whatever effects that we will apply, we will apply it to both the face and the body. So keeping it separate will make things complex for us. Let's make them together. So how do we club them together? We can do that by converting both of them into a smart object. You can go ahead and change the blend mode to normal because it will change it anyway. But Let's just convert it into a smart object by selecting both of them by holding the control or command, select the other one, right click and convert to smart object. That way it stays non-destructive. Then again, you might have to go to and change the blend mode again to multiply. Now, let me show you something very interesting. At any point, if you want to get back to the face and the body, just double click on the thumbnail. It will open up another document and in that document, you will have both of them separate. So that's a good way to club things together. Let's go ahead and close it. and We don't want that anymore. The next step is molding the texture around the subject. Now, what do we mean by that? Right now, the texture is just like a flat piece of paper on the portrait. So suppose I am the subject of the portrait and this is the texture. So we need to mold it. We, we don't have to keep it flat. So something like this, mold it around the nose, around the face, and you get the idea. Now there are two ways of molding the texture. Number one, using displacement maps, which is automatic. And number two, doing it manually. 
Well, you can do it automatically, but more often than not, it's a little inaccurate. And I've already covered displacement maps in this video. You can go ahead and check that out if you're interested. But for this tutorial, you're gonna use Liquify and do that manually. So here's how we do it. Go to filter and then inside of filter, Liquify. Now, once we are in Liquify, I can see the background, but you might not be able to see that. So all you have to do, just tuck it in, come down to view options. And inside of view options, you have to check show backdrop. Okay, use the background layer. We want to see the background layer or behind. We want the background to be behind the texture or in front. That's totally upon you. Or you can also choose blend. So you're going to choose behind and decrease the opacity of the texture just a little bit so that we can see the subject like that. And then adjust the texture. So zoom in using the forward warp tool, adjust it. Now there's a technique of adjusting it. As you can see on the face, there's a bump just like this. So here's how we adjust it. Make it a little bigger. Now, the first thing that you need to do, take it inside a little bit, push it a little in, make sure the pressure is low, somewhere around 20% is fine. Take it a little in, push it in just like that. Okay, push it in, take it a little in, push it in. Bring it a little out, push it in a little more. Bring it a little out, make it smaller, push it in a little more. Bring it out, push it in a little more. Okay, so that way it's giving it dimension. How is it giving it dimension? We are pushing in more texture around the edges because the angle is such, the more will fit right over there, right? So it's just like hair. If you look at my hair from this angle, it doesn't look like so much hair, but if you look at it from this angle, there's a lot of hair because the angle is such. So we have to push in more like that. Don't worry about the outside, just worry about the inside. Now you can also angle it if you want to. I'm gonna go ahead and decrease the opacity a little more like that. Push it in even further. According to the cheekbones, you can really customize this and take your time doing this. I'm gonna go ahead and do this very quickly. Take it in, push it in. Take it a little out, again push it in. Take it a little more out, push it in. Take it a little more out, push it in. Take it more out, push it in. So that's how you create that kind of dimension. So again, I'm gonna repeat that for you. Take it in, push it in. Take it out a little bit, push it in. Take it out a little more, push it in. Take it out a little more, push it in. Out, push. Like, do the same right over there. Make sure you maintain the angle. See, I can maintain the angle and make it look more realistic like that. Okay, around the neck, it's gonna be different story. I'm gonna like this and you're gonna drag it like that, drag it down just like that. Make it a little bigger, I'm gonna drag it down. Similarly, ar around the shoulders, we can make it bigger, take it inside, push it in. Take it a little outside, push it in. Little more, push, push, that's fine. Like that. That's wonderful. That's looking pretty darn good. Similarly, do it with the top. See the straight line, we want to just give it an angle. So if you want to add the texture along the hair so you can give it some angle, you can go creative with that and get the whole picture. Now once you're satisfied with this, you can also go ahead and add some bump around the nose so you can just push it in. So take it inside, I'm going to go ahead and increase the pressure to around 40-ish. Take it inside, push. Similarly, inside, take it again, a little outside, and then push it just a little bit. So, similarly, under the eyes. I kind of like the yellows around the eyes. It's looking pretty. So, that's pretty good. I'm kind of satisfied with this. You can just rise up cheekbones like that. 
and add more you can just go hours and hours into that and under the lips so you can add some so that's more than enough hit okay you can go more in depth into this but i'm gonna leave it at that so have a look at the difference it will make so have a look at this so this really got, adds a lot more dimension to it look around the corners looks much more better than before so have a look at the before it's straight it's flat it's it's fake but have a look at the after it's adjusted it's looking much more realistic see it's adjusted flat adjusted similarly over here down here flat adjusted now for this example and in this case we have chosen the blend mode multiply now multiply is a blend mode which darkens stuff if there is any color which is completely white here it will make it transparent so if we zoom in and have a look these areas were completely white it makes them transparent so for that we need to create one more layer and change the blend mode to screen because screen brightens and adjust it and we have to make a lot of copies so we need to merge it but before that let's increase the contrast of the texture layer so to, in to do that very simple click on the adjustment layer icon and choose curves and take the curves a little bit to the left now it's increasing the overall contrast we don't want that we just want to increase the contrast of the texture so click on this button this creates a clipping mask that way it, the effect just limits to the texture don't go too much if you go too much see it's getting it invisible why because multiplies the blend mode those areas are getting white up to this point I think it's fine yeah that's fine you don't need to darken it because multiply already is a blend mode which darkens stuff now go a little to the right just like that and merge all of these three why because as we said we need to make a lot of copies of this texture so you can go ahead and change the blend mode again to normal you can not do it it's totally upon you it will adjust it to normal back again anyway so make a selection of all of these three actually make a selection of these two liquify will automatically be selected hold the control or command select this one it's pretty much fine right click convert to smart object and you can always go back by double clicking on the thumbnail all right change the blend mode again to what to multiply that's fine now let's make a lot of copies of this so this is the dark this represents the dark make a copy of this this is very dark let's bring it down this is also multiplied this is for a very dark and we need to limit it to very dark areas how do we do that you guessed it right it's blend if so double click on the right hand side of the layer this will open up the layer styles dialog box and then inside of that in the blending options inside the blend if take the slider of the underlying layer from right to left which means we are making the bright areas of the underlying layer which is the subject okay making the bright areas of the underlying layer invisible from the current layer so if you take it to the left it takes away the bright areas this is very harsh so we will break down the slider to make it smooth this is pretty okay hold the alt or option click on the slider and then move it a little apart now that's looking good hit okay so this represents very dark areas now we don't want very dark areas around the chin because it's difficult distinguishing it from the neck so you can add a mask to it so click on the mask button take the brush and just erase these areas just paint these areas with black make sure the foreground color is black press X to toggle between the foreground and the background so you can erase this area no pressure you can do that you can do anything you want and paint back in some of the areas under the chin that's pretty good I like it now have a look at the before and after before adding very dark after adding very dark it really adds some dimension to it now let's add the light version okay make a copy of the dark press control or command J and change the blend mode of this one from multiply to screen now screen is a blend mode which lightens up stuff and that's why you see it all around the background as well because background is black it will lighten it up okay 
So double click on the right hand side. We need to take it away from the dark areas. And guys, by the way, if the background was lighter, you might have to make a selection and then remove it. Keep that in mind. Take it from the left, just like that and make it limited just to the bright areas. Now this is harsh. Again, hold the Alt or Option, click on this. Now this time we are doing just the opposite. We are taking the slider from the left and moving it right because we want to delete the dark areas of the underlying layer. So like that now have a look at this. The white things are visible now. See the white things are visible now. It's looking much more better. So like that I kind of like it and then break it hold the alt or option click on it and then break it I love it it's okay now that's much more realistic you can add one more brightness level so I'm gonna go ahead and adjust it even more I think it's very too bright I think it's okay but on the head it's kind of too much so again what did we learn create a mask out of it. But before you create a mask, make a copy again if you want super bright areas and turn it off. We'll adjust that later. Create a mask and then paint in black in this area. We will go ahead and decrease the flow to 30% and just, just, just dab once and that's fine. And it's, that's okay. If you think this area is too bright, you can also paint once and twice in these areas. Okay, let's add a super bright area if you wish to. So this is a super bright area and we can go back to the blend diff again and really take it a notch further like that. I kind of love it. Hit OK. I'm going to make a copy of the super bright area. Have a look at the before and after, before, after. Only in some areas it looks good. So we will create a negative mask and paint on just some super highlight areas. Hold the Alt or Option, click on the mask and then take the brush and paint on these areas where we want them in white. The yellow areas are shining too much. We want them in the lips a little bit, maybe a little bit over here. Not too much, just a little bit. And that's fine. That's more than enough. Not here. A little bit. Or like this. Okay. Or you can again adjust it. Double click on the right hand side. Adjust it the way you like it. That's fine, that's looking pretty nice, awesome. It's okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add one more screen under everything, under the very dark, so that it adjusts according to the face. So you can do as much layers as you want, make a copy of the dark again, because all these have masks now. And I'm gonna go ahead and change the blend mode to screen and put it beneath everything. And double click on the right hand side of the layer and take it. This is just a soft one before, after. It adds a little bit to it. So we go ahead and create a mask out of it. And we don't want it in all the areas. So let's just make it softened by erasing it from this area, erasing it probably from this area, from the nose, from the side of the nose, giving it some dimension from here, from the top of the lips, a little bit from the bottom and then decrease the overall opacity because I think it's too much. So let's add a little bit of it, like 42% or probably 35% and that's fine. Also, if you want to add a super dark area, make a copy of the dark again and then double click on the right hand side of the layer, do the same thing, take the slider of the underlying layer from top to bottom like that. This is for the super dark areas and once you're done making the adjustments, hit OK. And then you can always go ahead and create a negative mask or even a positive mask and erase it from the chin because we, don't, we didn't want it there. Okay, increase the flow to 100 this time. And that's pretty good. Before, after. It's on the chin. Make sure you select it, paint it with black, not white. Okay. Have a look. Before, after. It's pretty good. It's not bad. Maybe add a little bit to the lips. So with white, you can paint over there. And there we go. Now you can add one more layer of dodging and burning. So make a group of all of this. Select the first texture, hold the shift key and select the last texture. It will select everything in the row and then make a group of it by pressing control or command G. Okay, have a look before, 
after, before, after. Isn't that wonderful? Now what you can do, you can add one more dodging and burning layer. So create a new layer, completely blank, and you can name it dodging, D-O-D-G-E. And then take the brush, make sure the blend mode is overlay, and then simply paint in white on this layer. Yes, simply paint in white, decrease the flow to 2%, something like that, and paint in the areas which are protruding in the direction of light. So anything which is facing the light, brighten it. And then we'll burn it. We'll darken the areas which are facing away from the direction of light. So just brighten up these particular, for example, the nose a little bit, the cheek a little bit, the forehead a little bit. Don't paint where there is not required to. For example, this area is pretty bright. So we didn't have to paint there. You can also erase that by using the simple eraser tool and that's fine. Have a look at the before and after. It does make a difference. So before, after, before, after. So also we don't want these effects in the dark area. So double click on the right hand side and then take the slider of the underlying layer from just like this and make it softer like so. Okay. You can also do one with burning. So let's decrease the opacity. I think it's too much. Let's give it 75-ish and create one more layer and you can name it burn. Burning means darkening. Take the brush and this time black is the color, flow 2% and paint dark in the areas which you want to, which are facing away from the direction of light. Okay. That's kind of too much and change the blend mode to overlay. Don't forget to do that. I just forgot to do that. Okay, you can just accentuate the cheekbones and just make the shadows a little more darker around the neck. Add dimension to the torso and you're pretty much good to go. Now the last step is to add some texture, but have a look at the opacity. If we decrease it, it's kind of too much. So we're going to go ahead and increase it to 62 or 65%. That's fine. Now I think the nose is not popping up properly. So let's zoom into the nose and just darken in a couple of areas around the side. So I'll just paint those areas in black like that. Take the brush, increase the flow a little bit, maybe 4%. Try painting in those areas and I'll just increase the opacity. Okay. Now let's have a look at this, how this looks. We could have created a separate layer for the nose. Let's go back and create a separate layer and we can merge that later. That's fine. Create a separate layer just for the nose and overlay. You can create as many layers as you like and we want 100% opacity here. Flow 4% or let's say 3%. That's fine. And darken around the nose. I think that's weird. That's making the nose come out. So before after before after adding really good dimension to the nose so you can create as many layers as you like but we're going to decrease the opacity this is kind of too much so 30 35 percent is good and you can make a group of all of this so select all of this by holding the control or command or you can also hold the shift key and select all of them you can name it if you want to burn two or you could have merged burn two and burn zero or there's nothing over there so make a group of all of this three and before, after, before, after adds really good dimension to it. So let's add some fine texture to it, fine texture to the existing color. How do we do that? Make a copy of the dark again, okay? Make a copy of the dark, select the dark, press Control or Command J to make a copy. Place it all the way at the top, okay? All the way at the top. Then change the blend mode from multiply to overlay. Okay, do that. It's looking bad, but I get it. It won't look bad. Then go to filter, other, high pass. Okay. Now zoom in and control the radius accordingly to the image. If you decrease the radius all the way to 0 0.1, it will accentuate the noise and gradually increase it where it exactly finds the edge. So the radius determines how thick the edge is. If you put the radius very low, it will think the noise is the edge and it will add contrast around the noise and make it more visible. So you need to find that perfect spot. If you go too much, it will look, it will give it a halo effect and you don't want that as well. So let's go ahead and increase it and you can see that real time, whatever is happening like right over there. 
1.1 is good. If we increase it, it gives it also a good effect. So 1.3, 1.7 is great. Hit OK. Now you don't have to go full opacity. You can decrease the opacity to your liking. I'm going to go ahead and increase it to 39. That's fine. Can I be honest with you? Now when I look back at the image, I want to do something about the cheek. It's looking very bright. And the secret to achieving any effect in Photoshop is just play along with it. There's no set of rules that you have to do this after this after that. Just play along, all right? So at this point, this area looks a little too bright. So here's what we will do. If I turn off the dodge and burn, that area is looking fine. But if I turn it off, other areas are not looking good. It's, it's a strange situation right over there. So I'm going to try a couple things. So make a copy of the darks and put it over dodge and burn. Okay, so put it over dodge and burn. So I think this one is the dodging and burning layer and put it over that. Okay, so this one was that. Now what we will do, we will try multiply and decrease the opacity of this and increase it gradually until that area looks good. That area looks good now. Then make a negative mask out of it. Hold the Alt or Option, click on the mask button. Black hides, white shows. So it's completely black. You cannot see the layer anywhere. So take the brush and simply just paint on that area with white so that to make it visible. Flow is 3%. You can increase the flow to 11. And see, that area is much more natural now before, after. See the naturality over there. You can do it similarly for this area, a little bit for this area. So it's just a game. Photoshop is just a game. So that's perfect. Now, if you want to erase the eyes at the end, make a group of all of the mess that we have made. Select the first one, hold the shift key, select the last one right over there, not the background one. Control or command G, group of all of this. Now, let's erase the eyes, create a mask, and then simply zoom in. And you can make a selection using anything, but I'm gonna directly use the brush. Just make the brush a little smaller and paint that area in black. Increase the flow to 100%. And let's get the eyes back. I'm going to go ahead and do this very quickly. And you can also add color to the eyeball if you want to. So you can leave the color to the eyeball by painting right in your C. So that's something you can do, but if you don't want it, it's completely upon you. Let's see how that looks. Let's zoom out and let's have a look at that. Is that looking good? Well, to me, it's looking good. I like it kind of. You can leave it at that, but I like the blue too. So let's delete this particular area. First delete the complete one and then let's add the eyeball. I kind of like it. Then you can add some shine to the eyes if you want to. We will remove it later if it looks strange, but let's leave it at that. That's not a perfect selection, but you can take your time to make a perfect selection. now. Uh, let's erase the extra areas right over there. So add. Okay. So now what you can do, you can add a solid color adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose solid color and choose 50% gray. 808080 is the hex code for that one. Hit OK. And change the blend mode of this one from normal to color dodge. Okay. As you can see, the eyes are bright now, but it's all over the photo and we don't want that. Select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. Then zoom into the eyes, take the brush, keep the flow a little low, 10%, and then just simply paint with white around this particular area to add that extra shine to it. So we are making the catch light brighter and the opposite iris brighter, adding some shine to this thing. So let's have a look at this. So eyes, if you want the eyes this way, you can keep it this way. And by the way, that is looking good. If you want to erase this color and you want to keep it blue or whatever color the eyes are, you can also erase it, selecting this mask, mask and painting that area in black. Completely upon you, whatever you choose, it's artistic and art is something which is subjective. So there you go. That's how you add texture to your photos in Photoshop. And this is the final result. Hope you liked it. So that's how to add creative texture and color to your portraits very easily. Now, don't get confused seeing so many less. It's super simple to do if you understand the concept. Now, what is the concept? Let me sum it up for you. First of all, place the texture over the subject. 
number one. Number two, you can change the blend mode to multiply, adjust it the way you like, clean it up if you want to, okay? Next, you can use liquify to shape it up. And if that's a face and a body thing, separating stuff, you can make a selection and then put it in. But everything that we are doing, that's not a step. Everything that we are doing at that stage, either using liquify or selections or separating the face and the body is molding, remember, molding the texture to the body. Now, once we mold the texture to the body, then you can use blend modes like multiply and screen to apply the texture. In between, you can group them if you want to. You can keep them as they are. I decided on grouping them. Now, once you use blend modes, you can also use blend if to limit those. At the end, you can also apply dodging and burning and some fine texture using the high pass filter and the overlay as we did. And that's pretty much it. After that, you can add as many effects as you like, like retouching the eyes or removing specific areas like the eyes or even the lips if you want to. And that's pretty much all you have to keep in mind while doing this, just the concept. Adjust it, mold it, use the blend modes, give the finishing touches. Hope you liked this video and if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss a thing. Also, please share the video as much as you can. I will be very thankful to you for that. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.